So I'm Jeff Patmore and I'm in the MIT Media Lab. The Media Lab forms the hub of our relationship at MIT. We've been here now for almost two decades. Uh, I was reminded the other day by Rosalind Picard that it's 18 years that BT has been interacting with the Media Lab. Why has the Media Lab been of such value to BT for such a long period of time? In essence, it's because it provides us with fantastic insight into new technologies. We interact with both students and academics here, and they show us new things, new technologies, and new ways of working. But more than that, it's not just about the science, and it's not just about the academic study. At the Media Lab, they build things. They build demonstrators, they build prototypes. And that allows us to, to play with this new technology, to try it. But you might ask yourself, do we take that technology and do we use it in the business? How many times have we taken technology out of the Media Lab and actually used it in, in British Telecom? And the answer is actually not, not that often. Um, over the period, we, we may have done that perhaps seven or eight times. But what it does do is it triggers conversation. We visit the Media Lab, we chat with the academics, we chat with other sponsors. And it makes us think about the world in different ways. And it's that triggering of different ways of thinking which is the tremendous value that the Media Lab brings. You might also ask yourself, why are they able to trigger these really interesting conversations? And it's because of the fantastic variety of science that goes on here. There's work in nanotechnology, there's work in computer science, and there's work in human augmentation. And right across all those areas, there are fantastic students and great academics who are doing work, but doing it together. There's work in new music. There's a chap here who's looking at the future of opera. We're thinking about where TV is going in the future, but we're also doing sciences like um, collaboration and how new technologies can help in that. Seven years ago, I attended a lecture by John Undercoffer who had been scientific advisor on the film Minority Report. And one of the pieces of technology that he'd come up with for the film was a gesture interface for Tom Cruise. Uh, imagine my delight when I visited the Media Lab this week and found that uh, the interface itself now existed. Um, and you can now use that gesture interface to manipulate video, just as, uh, as John had demonstrated within the film. And in fact, the, the gesture language that he'd come up with, um, and at, at the time had used uh, in a pictorial form, uh, is exactly the, uh, the language that he's used uh, on this new interface. So now you can move video around, you can stop video, um, you can bring things out, you can push things in just as it has happened in the original film, Minority Report. It's the intersection of all those different sciences. That's where the really interesting conversations take place. And when we meet with other sponsors and we meet with academics, those discussions wander around and they allow us to think about the world as it might be in the future. But how do we get real value from our relationship with MIT and especially with the Media Lab? And the way we do it is to embed ourselves within the lab. I'm sitting outside of our office here at, uh, uh, at the Media Lab, and one of my people spends three weeks out of four based here. And it's not just about triggering pieces of research, sponsoring pieces of research. It's about interacting with the people. It's about sitting down over a coffee and having conversations about innovation and about new technology. And again, those conversations wander around and we think about how those new technologies might affect us in both business but also in the way in which we work. And it's that interaction that happens all the time while we're here that allows us to think differently about our business. There's a hackneyed phrase, thinking outside the box. When you've been in industry a long time, you tend to develop blinkers. You tend not to think broadly and expansively about the way the world could be. Spending time at the Media Lab 
really allows us to think really outside of the box, right outside the box, to try experiments. I was speaking with Ros Bicard only a few minutes ago, and she was telling me that an experiment she carried out a few years ago now um, with sensors that looked at skin condu conductivity um, and how people react to stirring emotional music has now led to her doing some fantastic work um, looking at children with autism and allowing her to help them to concentrate um, in lessons when they're being taught new subjects. And the longitudinal uh, examination of that data has allowed us to build new models of how the brain really works. So these strange experiments that we sometimes interact with very often lead to fantastic pieces of science in the longer term. This is a great place to be. Um, these are interesting people to interact with and the way to get the maximum value from those interactions is to spend time in the lab talking with the people.